Grunts in the Sky, the A10 Warthog leak footage, a short documentary of the A10 in action. Bro, the A10 looks absolutely insane. So I'm excited to jump into this. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button down below. I do have a Patreon that I uploaded my unedited PO Box video on. The edited version will be on the channel very soon. But yeah, let's jump into this and see what we got. So personnel interview for the video asked to be identified by the call sign. Okay, okay, sure, sure. That makes sense. We're gonna get actual footage. Bro, look at it. Yo. Oh, this is gonna be mad. It starts out as uh, something that you've trained for all your life trying to make a difference. The cool thing is, as an A-10 pilot, on times when the stars align and you're up on that mission, uh, where you get to make a difference, uh -huh. you get to see the reward. It's a pretty easy answer to in terms of why are we here. Number one priority is always saving guys on the ground. The people that we right. uh, so closely work with, the, the guy on the ground. That's my whole soul and being is that guy on the ground oh they're all saying the same thing guy on the ground bro that's what the a10 is for for that you know that ground support right there you know he could be an 18 year old guy 18 year old kid with a rifle that's all he's got and i'm here to protect him all right cool 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 sanitized dog tags id card left breast pocket uni kit watch tape badass like guides maps dtc's rmms uh, let's see, visor, pedal packs, water, snacks, seat cushion if you guys want to take that. Cell phones, you got one, you have yours, okay, signed up. Yep. One random Friday, uh, spring of 03, so right after the, uh, uh, the Iraqi invasion, uh, three guys in flight suits walked into the bar on campus and started talking about flying. And I was a year away from graduating, not really knowing what I wanted to do in life, and this guy started talking about flying fighters and uh, being a fighter pilot, being in the Air Force, and how no awesome way. it was, and uh, it kind of, uh, Hit a, hit a nerve with me, if you will. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. Yo, you know what? This is really cool because like, I've seen like movies and shows and stuff, but I've never seen like this. You know what I mean? Like an actual like documentary, like raw footage. How I got interested in the A-10, uh, I can still remember it to this day. Uh, it, I was at a, uh, a hobby store because I like a lot of kids interested in aviation. I built a lot of airplane models. And this right. was 1979. I was in, in high school and went to the hobby store and they had a Ravel model of the, the for then brand new A-10. Uh, it, it had only been operational for a couple of years at that point. Fell in love. And I just saw, and I remember, I can still remember this day looking at the, the wall of models and just trying to pick what I was gonna build next. And I saw this, the box and the picture and I was like, what in the world is that? You know what? When I was a kid, actually, I had something like this where you built... Oh, I actually loved it. I really did. I can remember doing it with my granddad as well. Like, we would build, like, um, the jet light models and stuff. During about the last really month cool. of pilot training is where you put in for what airplanes you want to fly. And I was torn on the F-15E or the A-10 on which one I wanted to put number one on my list, you know. So, uh -huh. luckily, uh, uh, one of the respected IPs in our flight had flown both the A-10 and the F-15E. And all he said to me was, Mitchell, what patch do I wear on my shoulder on Fridays? And the patch he always had on was the A-10. So I ended up putting the A-10 as number one. Uh, oh, cool. I loved the mission, the thought of the mission at the time. And I love watching him fly. I hope he lost his voice. Hello? Where's he got? Yo, look at that. Mad. I bet the feeling of like actually being there flying it would be crazy. Like just spinning. Like uh, I, I kind of want to know what it feels like, but I'd be terrified. Like I'd feel like I would just fall out of the sky. So cool. Refueling. Wait, what is that that is dropping? Because I... It's, that's, not, that's not bombs, missiles, is it? Like this, or what is it that's dropping? Is it shooting? 
What? Yo, look at that. Yeah, that is sick. I want to fly one, but I can't and I'd be scared. I was a uh, first lieutenant. Uh, I was 26 years old uh, when, when Desert Storm kicked off. The 26-year-old fighter pilot caught the nation's attention a few months ago when he and a partner shot down a record number of Iraqi tanks. Oh, wow. You just never forget when you look down and realize that somebody's trying to shoot you down and you've got to, to, uh, to kill him first. My first full two years in the Air Force, it was pretty much a completely Cold War type of uh, mentality. Our training was all very low altitude. Right. Uh, it's, uh, it doesn't seem that long ago to me, but uh, I know talking to a lot of the guys now, you know, they're, it, it, it's uh, been quite a while ago. And, and when you look at the airplane from then to now, it's, it's pretty amazing the different upgrades and, uh, that we've gone through since then. The A-10 is the so only badass. airframe ever that was built entirely for this mission. Yo, come on, man. They're about to do a gun run. You need to get down. Let's go, buddy. Come on, man. Yo, this voyage is so sick. Saving the day again, baby. <laughs> Yo, that is sick. There's nothing that matches uh, the devastation that that gun can uh, can bring. Bro, I've never seen footage like that. Like actual real footage. You got the soldiers, and then you got the A tens perspective. That's mad. Wait, are they the bullets here fires? Yo. Bro, if that hit you, you literally... <laughs> Yo, you just explode! Oh, hell no. Pocket for the combat! 30 mil inbound! Now I'm just seeing awesome the bullets coming out to of the, it. To the aircraft, I think that the same gun that we used to kill main battle tanks in 1991 is the same gun where uh, we can shoot a single insurgent uh, that's fleeing on a, on a motorcycle. Or uh, or uh, shooting our, at our guys from a uh, from what? a tree line. Point is, you know, the A-10 was built for ground combat. Wow. Okay. Ground combat has we had the old linear battlefield type where we're going to go fight a bunch of tanks going low at 100 feet, and then we've morphed into a medium altitude precision strike platform because the airplane has been updated and modified to be able to do that. What is that? Sensors are great. They're amazing. They, they enable precision strike. They yeah. enable us to generate coordinates that, that are pristine, that are right on the target. But that will never replace just, you know, looking right outside of my cockpit and looking at the battle space. What am I seeing out there big picture? Wait, 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 wait. Is he pretty much saying that, like, sometimes they manually shoot? They don't use... Nah, there's no way. There's no way they manually shoot. Surely they always use, like, you know, their technology and their sensors and stuff, right? No We do way. have this personal connection with the people that we uh, so closely work with, the, the guy on the ground. Uh, we hear uh, him getting scared. Right. Request immediate re-attack, same remarks, same restrictions, from last hit, north 75 meters. We hear him getting excited. We Here we go, that's it. Good hit, good hit, good hit. Wow. That's two, I need you in the same, same remarks, same restrictions. We hear the bullets flying. We hear him taking cover. We hear him breathing hard. No way. Uh, and and it's, it's, it becomes a very personal, uh, right. a very personal mission, uh, especially when, when you start hearing about guys uh, taking casualties uh, down there. You take that, that hits very, very close to home. Nobody ever wants to hear that. We care about guys on the ground. We do our mission in relationship to guys on the ground. We are support element, essentially, for the Army. They're all for guys on the ground. That is so like badass and cool though. Like the squad on the ground has like you know you know like a friend in the year. There's an A ten, bro. That that is cool to see. <laughs> Jesus, man. Yo. What's that? Is it? Is that a 
a bum and run? We care about the guy on the ground. I'm not saying air and addiction mission isn't caring about the guy on the ground, but it's not tangible. You can't really grab the benefits of it right then. Right. You're going to wait a certain amount of time to see its effects. Air to air, how's that about the guy on the ground? Well Hold on. I thought when you joined the military, you have to shave your hair. How? They got hair. How did, wait, 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 what? Wait, what is the rules on shaving your head then? I, 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 every time I see something, they're bold, bro. Or is that just in training? Is that, is that just for training? Well, you're building air superiority, air supremacy, correct. But is the guy on the ground going to see it, get the tangible benefits of it? No. Close air support is about the guy on the ground. Combat search and rescue is about the guy on the ground. Um, we're joint. We're a joint airframe and an air force. And that's what makes us different. Oh, wait, of course people have hair, bro. Because I've seen, like, pictures of, like, squads and they have hair. Wait, so why in, is it training when they just shave shaving bald then? I know you can't have long hair. There'll be, like, a requirement, but... Bold operation base. Gizney. Take a nice little sleep. Okay, uh, today we're going down to sign a suit. Man, that gun looks so heavy, bro. That, <laughs> yo, I would never be able to be in the military, man. I wouldn't be able to pick that up. Never mind, do the things they're doing, carrying all this equipment. In no way. In no way. Okay, uh, today we're going down to sign a Sufla. We've been there recently, so we've got a good lay of the land. Wow. Um, keep in mind, the spiny's been pretty hot recently, and they've had some contact from the same area around Sande Sufla. Uh, he went over the recent activity, keep in mind the uh, kind of MO we've had recently out of there. They've seen the, the Taliban commander kind of looking at the objective first, doing a quick meeting, picking up weapons en route. Usually there's motorcycles involved. Uh, you've also got the uh, Taliban commander that they uh, seeked a couple weeks ago. So you've got all that stuff going on right there in Aspandi. We're going right into the heat of that. So. Keep that in mind as, oh, wow. uh, as we get down there. Keep your eyes open and uh, stay vigilant. All right, so our actions on contact, near and far ambush, return fire. Look to me, we'll either maneuver or we'll push through. IED, get 360 degree security and clear the danger area, and then we'll look to Kazavak. Uh, in the case of a complex attack, we're going to return fire, move out of the kill zone. Indirect fire, get down, look for uh, distance and direction from me. Our actions on halt, take a knee, face out. And uh, the march intervals that we're going to use are going to be dependent on where we are uh, in the open area, spread out as much as you can. The bigger we can look and the more intimidated we can look, the uh, less likely we're going to take contact as we move down there. Yo, this short doc documentary is so cool to watch. Like, this is actually, like, I'm so fascinated to, like, what they're actually doing. Because, like, forget the movies, the series. This is real life, you know what I mean? That's all I've got. What are your this questions? is real. All right, we're kidding up. 0615. Breakfast? Wait, did he have just raw egg? Did he just crack an egg and just eat the raw egg? Yesterday, as most days, we went out on a dismounted patrol uh, south of our fob to a village of Aspondi. Uh, basically, we got some intel that uh, some bad guys were storing weapons in a building, and we had contacted them before. We'd run into them before. So we went down there to kind of check back up, and uh, as we got down into the village, um, we ran into some some sketchy guys. Uh -huh. It just everything felt weird from the time we got down there. There was high tension. You could tell by the the NA's body language. He was antsy, pacing back and forth. The second that happened, we we know we spread out. Oh wow! But the the PL do his link up. Uh, it was just high tension. I felt from from the get go. Who's that? Go, go push. Oh my god, that scared me, that. That actually made me jump. 
I thought someone was going to jump out of them. He said everybody is the teachers here, so we are good people. Okay, if they're blah, 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 blah. people, they have nothing to worry about. Yeah. We're not going to take them. Yeah, uh, right. Just a lot of a lot of uh, sketchy reports. No one had uh, the same same story. Everyone, they were all family. They all lived in the same compound, but no one's story matched up. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I genuinely feel like I'm there with them, bro. I genuinely feel like I am the camera, and I'm like, hmm, yeah, interesting. Mm, mm. You're, you're, you're sus, bro. You're sus. I'm on to you, man. Unfortunately, we weren't able to detain them. Um, so as we started to, uh, to RTB, to head back to the base, um, we got word that the Taliban were maneuvering on us from the south. Yeah, we be advised right now. Uh, we're what does RTB, wait, oh, return to base, never mind, return to base. Uh, picking up and moving back uh, through Espande uh, towards uh, Ghazni. Look at all the equipment they got to carry. Yo! Mutant enter, we go. Who's the aim at? So, that way. And, uh, Hog, if I could get you, uh, Overhead of our uh, lead element uh, through a spondy, if uh, at all possible. As we were headed back to the base, we had to cross about two kilometers of open desert. I why I just see people running and screaming. We we're definitely in a, a huge open danger area. Right. We got about 500 meters outside of the village and started taking uh, some pretty accurate fire. Yo, wait for me! How do you even see who you're firing? It's so far. That white building! 227, send it. LG, can I fucking hang it? Hang it! Hang it! Hang it! Uh oh. Wait, they located him? Shoot it! Mod. Mod. There's no cover. Mod. I mean, there were people trying to find tire tracks to hide to get a little bit of a defilade behind uh, you know in, in that position the best you can do is spread out gain fire superiority you know and then wait for, for some air support our comms were a bit of an issue at the time and so they had a little bit of a struggle uh, but they did have uh, a10s luckily being pushed down to us I have your position south of the tree line Yo, now you know. Everyone watching this, now you know. The people shooting at them have messed up big time, bro. We were quickly... Yo, I was so engaged on, like, the squad. I totally forgot this was an A-10 uh, documentary, bro. Responded <laughs> and uh, working with the JFO on the ground and, and uh, one of my JTACs were able to get Hog on, on station quite quickly. We were taking some harassing fire at that point. Right here. Hey, man, I know you're busy, but I need full security, brother. Who's like, shooting? Bro. Somebody's fucking shooting at us still. Uh, but luckily, we had uh, the A-10s on station to uh, come in and do a nice show of force, which is always a, uh, a clincher for the enemy because they know what that entails. Oh, yeah, that's going to be devastating. There it is. There it is. Mod. Mod. 
Bro, you ain't gonna be firing after that. You gotta be the A10 crazy. It's proven itself time and again as being um, really a nightmare to the enemy. Right. Just its mere presence alone is enough to get uh, to keep the enemy at bay. Yeah, you've been uh, And in that situation right there, uh, again, just bringing those guys in quick and fast um, uh, was enough to push uh, push the enemy uh, away from our forces. The wow. ground troops that I work with, uh, when they think close air support, they think A-10s. And I think the reason for that is uh, they almost share the same mentality. Um, if you were to say that there's a grunt in the sky, it'd be a hog pilot. Yo, I've actually loved this video, man. This is a cool ass They're video. They're very user friendly. I mean, any one of these dudes could pick up the radio if I get shot in the face and, uh, you know, employ. Those guys are really professional, very well trained. And if, uh, you know, you have a random Joe who doesn't know what to do, those, those guys can pull it from them. Right. To win a war, you need boots on the ground, and to have boots on the ground, you need support, and you need the right kind of support to have boots on the ground. And All links. A10, honestly, even sometimes just a sound, or just telling the ground commander, "Hey, A10's on its way," or we have aircraft supporting that we hear five mics, and he asks what it is. Yo, I actually love, and it's actually crazy, and like how quick the A10 can get there to support the people on the ground. Like that, that is super cool. Like you're you're in fight, you know what I mean, and then you request. For the A10 and whatever, and then boom, it's here. You say, "Hey, we got an A10 coming on." It's, 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 uh, yeah, it, it picks them up a little bit. Right. Is that that really... sound is so distinguishable. I bet they love it. I bet they love it. It literally shakes the ground. It is amazing. Uh, you hear it first when it fires, and then you hear it echo from the gun in the sky. It. it that sound right there just drives 11 Bravo is nuts. It's amazing. Yo, that must be such a good hey, feeling. Hey, thanks, sir. I just shit my pants. <laughs> it's, it's that sound of uh, uh, <laughs> corny like freedom, but it, it really is. It's just, it's the sound of don't mess with me. Right. It, it, scares off everyone and shows you you're in good hands. Yo, that is so sick. That is literally like a statement, bro. Do not mess with us. Like, what are you doing? Look at that, man. Imagine like a fleet coming towards you. Bro. I think when people 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the road look back on it, I think people will look at this airframe and it will always be known as an airframe that was some people view it as ugly who'd want to fly that thing uh -huh. but you know what it was an airframe that got the job done it got bombs on target when right. it mattered most and guys went home to their wives and kids because of the airframe hell yeah it, it makes it yeah true because like in 40 years time bro they're gonna have like you know jets and stuff that like look really crazy or do really crazy things so this documentary is actually really cool to tell those people like ba back in this time, like their time, bro, it was perfect for them. You know what I mean? Like it, it did the job. It, uh, it's very humbling. It's that uh, we are so trusted and, and liked by the ground forces. I think that's something that uh, I'm very, very proud of. I right. love this that's airplane cool. uh, and, and uh, they trust us is the biggest thing. I mean, when you're shooting last night, uh, we just looked at it, it was uh, between 65 and 100 meters away from the from the friendly guys and for those guys to, to trust us uh, to do that uh, on a regular basis uh, is uh, is very gratifying yeah that's i got cool. the greatest job in the world man i get to fly fighters when uh when people need me to do my job i have the chance to save lives uh and and make a difference on the battlefield that is the mo when you when you hear the, the machine guns going off in the background when JTAC's screaming the bullets are hitting at his feet and you can hear the bullets pinging off the Humvee that he's hiding behind. Wow! Uh, and then all of a sudden you roll in, uh, you know, put some rounds down and take care of his problem for him. Uh, and then you know you can hear the relief in his voice. That is the most rewarding, fulfilling thing that I can think. Oh, of. for sure, bro! You've got a huge group of experts at what they do with a singular focus and. You can't really get that back once it's broken out. Yo, what a video, man. 
what a video i actually love watching that video that was such a good documentary enjoyed that hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as i did if you did make sure you have a thumbs up subscribe for more content let me know what you guys think in the comment section as well what you guys think about the a10 i'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash l if you guys want to check me out over there i'll see you on the next one peace